Right, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of James chapter 4 and verse 7. I started a series last week on resist the devil. And I am on a mission for us to be strengthened in this area. And we're going to see many, many breakthroughs. This month has been one of the greatest months of deliverance that we have seen. And even yesterday, we saw God moving. And God is for us, church. He's not against us. He's for us, and He wants to bring the breakthrough uh, for our lives. Now, the foundation scripture for the series is in James chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We can stand against the attack of the enemy in our families, our homes, our finances, our marriages. We have the authority and the mandate from heaven to be victorious in these areas. Can I have an amen, somebody? Now, last week I was sharing with people, you don't have to be afraid of the devil. Now, I can, I can honestly say, they were, in my past, growing up, younger times, the, the devil has the, the big horns and the big tail, and you have a sense of leave the devil and he will leave you alone. And I've come to realize something, is that God is waiting for the church to stand up and arise with authority and power, and you have the right to go into your house and say, in the name of Jesus, get out of my house and out of my life. And you don't have to be afraid, because... Satan is under our feet. Amen, everybody. So this is a very powerful scripture. Now, last week we also looked at John chapter 10, verse 10, which says, The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now, to every young person in this place, I want to say this to you and understand the Word of God and see what it says. Uh, the thief does not come except. There's no exceptions for why he has come. He hasn't come to bring a party. He hasn't come to bless you. He hasn't come to increase you in any way. He, when he enters your life, three things are going to happen. There will be death. There will be stealing and destroying. And that is the fruit of of every spirit of darkness. It doesn't matter what you call it, what name it is, whether it's a spirit of cancer, it's a spirit of poverty, it's a spirit of infirmity, whatever its name is, here are, here are its characteristics. It's come to steal the joy of God in your life. It's come to rob you from your destiny and your purpose that God gave you for this earth. And so the Lord is teaching us in this hour, particularly with the darkness that has fallen on the face of the earth right now, that it's time for the church to arise. Amen, somebody. So Jesus says, I have come. And the word come is, in, is a present tense in the Greek, which means he's come and he is here now. Now, in the old days, in about the 1900s, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit was being restored to the church, they used to have the tarrying meetings. People would tarry. They say, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, go to such and such a conference, and there they are receiving the Holy Spirit, and people would go and tarry. And that meant that you, you were there, you just waited for hours and hours and hours and days until the Holy Spirit fell upon you. I think they got that from the book of uh, Acts where, the, where, you know, where it says, go and tarry in Jerusalem. Well, we don't have to tarry anymore. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit has come. That's why the majority of you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You come to E1, you come to E2, you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? We have an understanding. He came and He remained. Now, I want to say this to you and hear me clearly. Jesus came and he has come. He is here now to deliver your house, to deliver your family, to deliver your life. That word come also has the, the idea of it with, in the Greek means light. That it comes 
as light into the darkness. Wherever Satan has come to bring destruction, he comes with his light and it goes and it disappears and its power is broken in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, I ended last week in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 46, which says this, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Listen to me. The first place that Satan seeks to attack is the mind. This is where strongholds are built. He gets us to believe wrong things about who God is, about who I am, my identity. And he gets us to believe wrong things about our relationships. Today I'm going to primarily focus on the enemy's plan against relationships. So I take you now to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, which is our verse for today. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, because we're going to go back there uh, towards the end of this message. Now, verse 27 says, Do not give place to the devil. Do not give place to the devil. So that tells us that we can open a door. For the enemy to come in and take a place, take a foothold. That we are the ones that can open the door. But it also tells me that it's possible then to not give place to the devil. That we can live as Christians with a blessed life. That we don't have to have the devil in our homes. So the Apostle Paul very strongly says, do not give place to the devil. Now it's interesting because the word place is a Greek word topos, T-O-P-O-S, topos. And it refers to a specific marked off geographical location. It carries the idea of territory, of a province, or a region, or a zone. And it's from this word that we get our English word, topographical map. And that refers to a map that has an accurate representation of the physical features of an area. For instance, every detail of a river. And it's really, family, it's the little details that Satan goes after. This word gives us the understanding and lets us know that the devil is after every region and every zone of our lives. So he's after our marriage. He's after your health. He's after your finances. He's after relationships. He's after your business. He's after your your ministry. And he is so territorial That when you give him one little spot, he wants to take the whole thing. And so this word tells us that he comes for the smallest little area just to get a foothold in our lives. And then he begins his work. How do we then open the door to the enemy? When it comes to relationships, church, it starts when we refuse to let go of hurts of wounds, things people have done to you, even as a child. There could be abuse that came in, some kind of assault, an absent parent, a word that was spoken. And that wound that is in your life is a place where the enemy begins to build a wall in your mind of hatred and unforgiveness towards people. It starts when we refuse to acknowledge that we have done wrong. When things have been done and we hide 
We hide our darkness. That's what the Bible says. Whatever you bring into the light will have no power over you. Confess to one another and you shall be healed. And uh, Tammy and I, we saw an amazing deliverance yesterday. When something came into the light. And these things have power and they walk with you in your life. Slowly devouring every part of your life. But we have the power to overcome. God has given us the authority in this area. So how the Bible says, resist the devil. He will flee from you. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a praise offering for that church? When we refuse to say, I am sorry to somebody, and we hold on to those grievances, and we hold on to rights, you say, I have the right to be angry because you were wrong. Then we are not acting as Christ reacts. We are expected as Christians to forgive even when other people don't acknowledge their wrong, just as Christ forgave us on the cross. And the devil uses these little things to gain a foothold in our lives. And they begin to build strongholds like walls in our minds. Now, if we do these things, we give Satan little marked off places in our lives. Territories, zones, areas that we're saying, you know, I am not going to bring this into light, that it will have darkness on it in my life. And that is where the enemy sets up camp. You'll find that unforgiveness doesn't end with the person that raped you when you were 13. It goes into your marriage. It continues into your relatives. It continues into your life. And that's why you find in certain families, there are strongholds that are on certain families. Certain families have a hatred towards marriage, have a hatred towards certain races and different things. These are strongholds that get built that have to be broken by the power of the Spirit. Some people, families, talk sickness over their lives all the time. That is a bondage that has come in that Jesus must break. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible declares, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. That's why the Bible says don't give place to the devil. We don't have to be run over like a truck. We can stand up and say, I will shut the door. I will not allow the enemy to have any place in my mind or my emotions. Let me give you an example. You can, something can happen in your life and you know somebody knew what was about to happen, but they didn't tell you about it. So you go to bed that night and you begin to ponder about them. And as you're thinking about them, unforgiveness begins to generate in your heart. And slowly a wall is being built in your mind. And every attack of the enemy in relationships is designed to bring a wedge between people. Now I have a wall in my mind to this person. I haven't spoken to them, but I believe they meant harm for me. How many of you know, by the time the morning comes and you wake up, you have an entire movie made on how they responded to you and how you're going to respond to them. And the next time you see them, the movie plays again. And if you leave it long enough, that wall is cemented in and becomes a wedge to that relationship. Even today, there are mothers, fathers, that have no relationship with their children. They're 60 years old, 70 years old, and there's no relationship there because of something that happened 30 years ago. People decided we will never speak again. That was the enemy's plan to rob you of a good relationship that was important. And we must kick that out in the name of Jesus. Amen. We kick it out in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you something right now. The devil does not pay rent. You know how you go to rent a place, they check up and check your payments and see if you're a good payer. Well, I've checked up on the devil. He's never paid one month in his life. So do not give him space in your mind. 
you will receive no payment from that space rented out. Amen? Now, the word devil, it's interesting. It's a diabolos. And it's found 61 times in the New Testament. And it, the prefix dia means through. It means through. And it's, it's through his deception and his accusations that he works. Not only his accusations towards us, but also the accusations that he builds in our minds towards others. And the word through carries it with it, this idea of penetration or entering in. And he's looking for a place to enter into your life. Where can he get a foothold where he can begin his work and drive a wedge? Let me tell you how it works. Something happens with somebody. It could even be your husband and your wife. Someone that you have loved and walked down the aisle with and married. And suddenly there's a thought. And that thought begins to build. And before long, every time you look at them, all you can know is the ugly little details of their life. It's like a new set of glasses has been put on your face. Instead of Ray-Bans, you have a pair of Diabolos. <laughs> and through your Diabolos glasses, all you can see is what people have said about them, is what you believe about them, and there's a wedge in your heart. And the enemy begins to use that wedge. And you become nit uh, nitpicky, negative, fault-finding attitude, and people that you used to hold in high regard, you don't even respect them anymore. And this can happen even between people. You know, you have someone um, tells you something about someone, and you, you don't even know the person, but from that day, you don't even like them. What is that? It's the work of the enemy, trying to stop you from a good relationship. And... The Bible calls these things strongholds. And we to cast these thoughts down in the name of Jesus before they get cemented in. So don't allow conflict, fighting in your relationships. Now let me take you to the passage of Scripture where it says, do not give place to the devil. And it's found in Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to read from verse 25. It says this, Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. Now, it's not talking about that you, you mustn't lie to your neighbor about about to them, about you or someone else. It's saying that you mustn't lie to your neighbor about somebody else. Look what it says. Speak truth with his neighbor. And then it says, for we are members of one another. In other words, I mustn't come and speak to you about somebody else and lie to you about them. You know how we, we like to talk about people and say, listen, you know that person, and this is what they did. And now... You have put something, you have sown a seed into this neighbor's heart and mind that wasn't there before. And Satan loves that. He's going to let it grow. Now, every time you see that person that you've never met, you already have an opinion. Or you had high regard for them, and now you don't even like them anymore. And we do that with one another and with family members and with churches and with other ministers and with all sorts of things. We like to talk about people. I dare say this to you. If we would stop talking about people, some of us would have nothing to say. <laughs> You'd be so bored at the dinner table. You'll be eating, looking at one another. Because we're so used to, hey, did you hear what did you see? Did you see the, what she was wearing? Did you see the hairstyle and everything? They go, I can't believe what da 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 da. I this and da da da. And, everyone. and that's your whole life. It's your whole conversation is about other people. And the Bible says it's a foothold for the enemy. Did you know that what you speak negatively about someone, you will never have in your own life? That's why the Bible says, bless and do not curse. Because if you bless others, blessing can come to your life. But if you speak curses over someone, you can have curses in your life. So just bless. So, so look what it says here. Um, he says, don't lie to your neighbors about 
everyone. We are members of one another. Do you know that if I speak about you to someone else, I'm actually speaking about Christ's body as Christians. We are Christ's body. Then the Bible says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Do you know that anger is a wide open door for the devil? You know, I've just, as I said that, I just thought of a joke. I wonder, if maybe I should tell you. It was about a little frog. Oh, it was a wide mouth frog. Yes. And the wide mouth frog was walking, hopping in the marsh and uh, around his field there and, and uh, came to a, a big hippo and he said, Mr. Hippo, I'm a wide mouth frog. What do you eat, Mr. Hippo? And the hippo said, oh, I eat grass. And he hopped along and he hopped along and he came to a little crocodile and he said to the crocodile, I'm a wide mouth wide mouth frog, Mr. Crocodile. He says, and uh, what do you eat? And the crocodile says, I eat wide mouth frogs. And the wide mouth frog says, oh, we haven't seen any of those around, have we? <laughs> the point is, some of us just need to close our mouths and blessing will begin to follow all the days of your life. Amen. <laughs> so, look what it says here. Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your own. This is a wide open door to the devil. God is saying, listen, if night time has come, give that thing to God. Don't go to bed with it because by the time the morning comes, there's a wall in your head. Give it to God, church. Has somebody hurt you? Just give them to the Lord and say, Lord, I trust my life with you. You don't have to defend yourself in front of every single person. To prove what to who? The most important thing is that your heart is right with God. If no one else wants to accept your life, it doesn't matter. Be a friend of God. Live for the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Say, Lord, I have been robbed today. And just, just give it to the Lord. You know, we, this last month, we, I sent a, a sound system to Mozambique for the conference I had. Well, guess what? It's still sitting in customs. Because that was so complicated. They needed a bank account, and you got to send a letter, and the guy messed it up. And after 30 days of, of taxes and storage and everything, it's now more expensive to take it out than what it cost. So I gave it to Mozambique. It's going to land up in the house of some government official at his poolside. And I said, you know what, Lord? I bless them in the name of Jesus. You know, sometimes you've got to just let things go. And the Lord will bless you. The Lord will increase you. The Lord will, will bring breakthrough in your life. Don't hold on. Don't let money be the reason why there's a foothold in your life. Just let it go. Be a blessing and God will bless your life. And it goes on and says this, Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give who has need. And he's talking to the church. Don't steal from one another. If you borrow money, pay it back. Do you know why? Because if you don't, you're going to have a brother in the church. When he sees you, he has a wall now of unforgiveness. In other words, he's saying, don't do things that cause a wall in the body of Christ. But rather, rather than do that, make sure you're a blessing to people. And it goes on, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Isn't that powerful? No corrupt word word of negativity. Now some people are continually negative all the time. My life is never going to work out. This is never going to happen. I, why am I that other people get ahead of me? Why doesn't it happen to my life? Where am I going? Is there hope for my life? The whole time. And when you speak like that, there's little territories that have been taken by the enemy. 
in your heart and your mind. Because the word of God says, God says, I have a plan for you. I have a future for you. I have a hope for you. When you speak like that, you're breaking God's plan for your life. The enemy has found a foothold of negativity. Don't take that through your life. You take it into your marriage. You can take it to your children. Break that thing today in the name of Jesus. Break it down. And we say, Lord Jesus, take this from my life. Let all bitterness be put away from you. Whatever is, has happened, people have hurt you, spoken up, uh, against you. Let me tell you something. If you allow bitterness to remain, it will make you sick. I have seen people sick because of relationship issues. Rather, you be the one that corrects it. Release it and bless it. And your life will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't let bitterness be there in your life. And I, know, I know many of you have been to Encounter Weekend many times, some of you. And there's that one person you're just saying, I will never forgive. But today, in this service, I have prayed this morning. I said, Lord... Let freedom come to people today. That bitterness, that root of bitterness that hooked itself in your heart, I command it to come out today in Jesus' name. It's breaking its power now. You let it go. And the blessing of the Lord will begin to follow your life. Let bitterness go. Let anger, clamor. You know what clamor is? It's like bells, pots. When somebody goes into the kitchen and starts banging pots, it's when people are fighting in the house or fighting in the relationship, fighting over, over Facebook, fighting over Instagram. You're clamoring. Da, 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 da. You took the, da, da. da, 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 da. And we always, and you always do this. And when that happens, the devil enters the house, breaks down relationships destroys marriages. The Bible says, do not give place to the devil. You say, Mr. D Listen, the next time someone comes and wants to clamor, you just go, mm -mm -mm. put your earphones in and get out the room. The moment you engage that thing, you're building a wall higher and higher and higher one day you will leave that house and never want to speak to your brother or your sister. Ever again. That's not God's plan for your life. He says, put this away from you. And then he gives us the key to how we should walk. And it says this, be kind to one another. Let me give you a key to prosperity. Pros when we mention the word prosperity. It includes money, but it's not only about money. When it talks about generosity, it means this. You lend something to somebody, your car or your, uh, your uh, lawnmower or whatever it might be. You lend it to them, and then they break the lawnmower. Then you buy a new one, and they come back the next month to say, can I borrow your lawnmower? A generous person is not just generous with money, but also with kindness. You say, oh, of course, because the Lord provided for me. I have been able to buy two while you still don't even have one. Be generous with your life. Generous with your heart. Because to the merciful, God will show himself merciful. Imagine God wasn't generous with you. You come to the Lord and say, Lord, I need forgiveness. He say, huh? Were you not here yesterday? <laughs> Let your heart open towards people, even your enemies. You know, I, I don't know, I haven't got my phone on me. There's, there's a scripture it says something like this. You know, 
if your enemy offends you, God says, don't, don't do evil to your enemy, lest the Lord sees it and he turn his anger from him. In other words, the best way to deal with enemies is to leave them to the Lord. God will do a better job than you, by the way. Do a better job. But the moment God sees your ugly heart, he says, hmm, this one did nothing compared to what I see in your heart. He takes his anger from him. Even the Bible says again, if you see your enemy's donkey wandering off, you don't get a stick and hit it harder so it runs away further. The Bible says go and take the donkey back to your enemy. That is a kingdom lifestyle. Be kind to one another. If you don't do it, the enemy comes in to the little details of your life. <laughs> Takes a foothold. Before long, poverty is coming into your life. You're losing money left, right, and center. He's come to kill, steal, and destroy. You don't want that in your life. Release people today in Jesus' name. Be tender-hearted. Don't be so hardened that you need a jackhammer to get into your heart. Don't be that person on a Sunday morning you're trying to worship. God has to come. Just so His presence can get in there. Tender-hearted, it means soft. Just let it be so soft towards people. You know, you, this is how you know the devil's in your life. I will never. I will never forgive him. Excuse me. That is Mr. Diabolos talking. <laughs> That's how you know. Just give your life to the Lord today. Release people in Jesus' mighty name. I'm telling you, sickness will leave your body. Poverty is going to go out of your, your life today. When you leave that room, poverty is leaving. Sickness is leaving. Brokenness is leaving. That divorce paper shall be torn up in the name of Jesus because of your love for one another. And the Bible says, forgive one another. Husbands and wives. I tell you right now, never before in the history of the church around the world and in South Africa are there so many divorces in the church. And there's many reasons for that, and this is not a divorce message. But I want to tell you something about the power of forgiveness. If you have two hard-nosed people facing each other, it's going to end in disaster. Somebody must soften their heart. Now, I put it to you for the husbands and wives. You say, well, who must be the first one to forgive? Of course, it's the husband. Don't you know that? <laughs> Have you not read in Ephesians 5 that the husband is like Christ? Did Jesus not die on the cross? So you die first. <laughs> Jesus died for the bride. The body, you die first. Take up your cross. Today, I want to hear in every garage, woodwork, build your cross. <laughs> Get on the cross and say to your wife, sweetie, take the nails. She will help you with pleasure. Every marriage can start afresh right now. If one of you would soften your heart. Do not give place to the devil. Come on, let's stand to our feet, everybody. Come, let's just pray. Nobody move around. Just, just lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, let's, let's trust the Lord. Let's trust the Lord for breakthrough in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. 
I take authority over every power of darkness. That it's wedged its way into your life. And I say to you, you shall bow at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now, every offense must bow its knee. And I want you to just, just lift your voice to the Lord. And if anyone's name comes to your heart, give it to the Lord right now. Say, Father, I forgive that man. I forgive that woman. I forgive that leader. I forgive that, uh, that boss. I forgive that pastor. I forgive whoever it is, that husband, that wife. Say, Lord, I release them now in the name of Jesus. Quickly, 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 quickly. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let bitterness be rooted out of every heart in this room. And Satan, I declare to you, you will give the ground back right now in Jesus' name. You give back that ground of where you've stolen. You give back that health to our bodies. You give back that prosperity in the name of Jesus. You give back those open doors and that favor upon our lives. And I declare healing in this room and deliverance and freedom and restoration to every marriage right now under the sound of my voice. And I bless you and speak life upon you. And I thank you, Lord, that you cause your light and your face to shine upon this church. And we will not give place to the devil here. We will bless and not curse. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Now just quickly, every eye is closed, every head is bowed. If you're here for the first time, or you're a backslider, you're away from God, you've come back to church. You're saying, Pastor, I need to make my life right with God. I want to give my life to Jesus today. I'm not asking you to join a church or a religion. I'm asking you, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? And the Bible says, whoever, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say, Pastor, how do I know? Right now, there's a knocking at the door of your heart. That's the Lord. He's saying, let me come in to your life. I don't care who you're standing next to. Forget about them. They cannot save you. You must look to Jesus right now. Lay aside your fears and your pride and respond to Jesus. In just a moment, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to say one, two, three. And right where you're standing, I'm going to pray for you. But on the count of three, I want you to quickly raise your hand, wave it at me, and put it down. And then we're going to pray a prayer together. Are you ready? One, two, three. Quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for all the hands that were raised. And now, church, can we all pray this prayer together? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I surrender to you now. Forgive me for rejecting you. Right now, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. Wash me of all my sins. And today, I accept you, Lord Jesus, as the one who died for my sins, who was raised from the dead. And I thank you today. Salvation has come to my house right now. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise, offering church.